is one complicated and confusing peripheral to understand, largely due to the fact that it demands a dictionary knowledge of an obscene amount of technical terms. To make matters worse, most of these are acronyms. What's a casual user to do when they look at a monitor's specs and are bombarded with the likes of LEDs, IPSs, TNs, TFTs, LCDs, and so on? Well, for a start, they can watch some of our videos. We've spent a lot of time on this channel talking about monitors and explaining their various specs. There are loads of links in the description that'll take you to the videos where we explain the differences between the various types of panels, connectors, refresh rates, and so on. But the one thing we haven't touched on is LED. And we've seen a lot of confusion regarding the acronym LED, and strangely enough, IPS. Naturally, we figured we should make a video to tackle this specific issue, and here we are really. So without any further ado, let's begin. Now before we can get down to the specific differences between IPS and LED, let's take a moment to go over some of the basics of flat panel monitor technology. And for that, we need to start with a different acronym, LCD. LCD, or Liquid Crystal Display, is easily the most popular display technology currently available, be it for monitors, TVs, or smartphones. These displays require a backlight in order to display images on the screen. Before LCD monitors took the world by storm, CTR monitors were the most common type of monitors. CTR stands for cathode ray tube. These are the massive box-like monitors that you must have seen somewhere, if only in pictures or TV shows. These monitors are no longer being made, so if you're interested in buying a new monitor, then LCD is pretty much the only option you have available. Now let's add a new acronym to the mix, TFT. TFT stands for Thing Film Transistor, and it's a technology that high-resolution LCD monitors use. It's basically a grid of thin film transistors added to the liquid crystals to improve contrast, sharpness, and brightness. These transistors can retain a charge long enough to effectively store the data of a pixel while refreshing for the next wave of display information coming from the source. What makes TFT LCDs so ideal for PC monitors, TVs, phones, and tablets is the fact that they allow for thin displays and that they aren't too expensive to produce. They're so good, in fact, that TFT LCDs are pretty much the only type of LCD used for these devices. So if a seller emphasizes that a certain device they're trying to push on you has a TFT LCD, really they're just trying to use confusing technical terms to make you think a device is more impressive than it really is. So how do monitors with the in-plane switching panel, or IPS, fit into all of this? Well, IPS is just one of several types of LCD panels. It's like with the fingers and the thumbs. All the IPS monitors are LCD monitors, but not all LCD monitors are IPS monitors. In any case, in-plane switching refers to the way molecules inside the liquid crystal of a display are positioned and oriented. We're not gonna get into molecule alignment here since that would get way too complicated, but just know that this is the main distinction between LCD panels. IPS panels were made to widen the viewing angle and increase the color accuracy, since TN panels were no good at this. If you look at a TN panel from an odd angle, the colors appear way off, like they start to shift or even invert in some extreme cases. But because the molecules in an IPS panel are parallel, the viewing angle is much wider and the image looks even sharper. What's more, IPS panels don't suffer from surface distortions like trailing. This is imperative with touchscreen devices like tablets and smartphones. If your device uses an IPS LCD technology, then your finger won't leave those unsightly artifacts whenever you touch the screen. If you've been around back when touchscreen cell phones were first being experimented with, you'll know what we're talking about. But IPS LCDs aren't without their fair share of downsides either. Not only are they more expensive to make than TN LCDs, they also require more power and molecule orientation simply demands a worse response time, refresh rate, and contrast ratio than that of a TN LCD. For example, 144Hz is pretty much the norm for TN gaming monitors, but very few IPS monitors go beyond 60Hz, and those that do cost a fortune. Lastly, we should mention that there are several variants of IPS, like Advanced Super IPS, Professional IPS, and Advanced High Performance IPS. We could go on and on about each of these, but really the differences all have to do with how well each IPS tech improves the contrast ratios and the color gamut range. 
As for how LED fits into all of this, it's basically in a completely different paradigm. You see, LED, or light emitting diode, isn't a type of panel, but a type of backlight. All LCDs need an active backlight, and LED is the most popular option right now. This means that IPS and LED technologies are not mutually exclusive. In fact, most IPS monitors have LED backlights. Now there are some further subcategories here for us to unravel. With regards to LCDs, we have two types of LED backlights, edge-lit LEDs and direct-lit LEDs. It should come as no surprise that edge-lit LEDs are positioned around the edges of the display, while direct-lit LEDs are positioned behind the screen. The edge-lit variants allow for thinner displays and greater power efficiency, but they aren't as bright and may suffer from backlight uniformity problems and ghosting. Direct-lit LEDs, on the other hand, have a much better backlight uniformity and higher overall brightness, but they demand bulkier displays. They also have inferior contrasts compared to those found on edge-lit screens, but this can be mitigated with the help of local dimming. Displays with this feature are known as full-array displays, and their backlight is split into several blocks that can each be turned off and on independently of one another. So as we've said, IPS and LED technologies aren't something you can really compare. Then why is it such a popular question? Well, our hunch tells us that this is a classic case of mistaken identity. See, there's this new acronym popping around, OLED, which is short for Organic Light Emitting Diode. Interestingly enough, OLED has nothing to do with LED backlights. It doesn't even have anything to do with LCD panels either. It's just a completely new display technology. What's interesting about OLED displays is that they don't require a backlight of any kind. Each pixel on an OLED display is its own light source. Naturally, this means that OLED displays are far more power efficient than LED displays, and because each pixel can turn off entirely to display true black, they are the undisputed kings of contrast ratios. And this isn't all. We've made a whole separate video on OLED displays, so check out the link in the description if you want the detailed rundown. But for now, let's just say that OLED displays are superior to LED displays in pretty much every way imaginable, from color accuracy to refresh rates and response times. They only have two drawbacks, image retention and pricing. We don't have a lot to say about the pricing, it's a new technology so it's bound to be more expensive. The prices will go down once the manufacturing process gets more developed and refined, but for now if you want an OLED display, you're gonna have to pay a lot. However, you may not even want one because of a little thing called image retention. The term is more commonly referred to as burn-in and it has to do with the pixels getting dimmer over time. Basically, when an OLED display shows the same static image for a long time, the active pixels start to lose their maximum brightness capacity. This can result in uneven brightness across the screen, which is the last thing you want if you've already gone ahead and paid the premium price for one of these displays. So we don't recommend them for desktop use. Since this is where the display is most likely to end up showing the same image for a prolonged period of time. If you still insist on using OLED monitors, then you might consider using this handy ancient technology called the screensaver. Old CRT monitors had the same problem where it was detrimental for them to display the same static image for a long time. So screensavers were used to fill the screen with moving images or patterns to give the screen something to do. Honestly, it's kind of funny how we've gone full circle to needing them again. And Windows 10 does have this feature. You just have to turn it on manually since the assumption is that most people don't really need it, which is true to be fair. To enable the screensaver, just right click on your desktop and click on personalize. Then go to the lock screen settings, scroll all the way down until you find the screensaver settings and configure the settings to your liking. And that about does it for this video. So to summarize, LCD is a type of display technology that can use one of several types of panels. IPS is one of these panels and the best one if you're looking to maximize color accuracy and expand viewing angles. LED, on the other hand, is a type of backlight. So you can very well go out and buy an IPS LCD monitor with an LED backlight. What's more, the LCD and LED are pretty much implied as soon as you say IPS. As for OLED, this is a whole new type of display technology that's renowned for its technical performance, especially its deep contrasts. However, the technology does have one glaring flaw in the form of image retention. This is such a huge problem for PC users that OLED may never really take off in the PC market. 
It's quite possible that we'll just skip it and hop aboard another emerging display technology train, like micro LED for example, but that's a video for another day. In any case, we hope you found this video helpful. If you have, you can help us out by liking it and subscribing to our channel. And if you've got friends who could benefit from watching this, help them out by sharing the video either directly or on social media. Also, if you want to see more videos like this one, make sure to click on the bell icon so that you'll get a notification whenever a new one gets uploaded. We're constantly working on new videos for you, so the next one should be right around the corner. In the meantime, may your games be fun and your losses few. And as always, we'll see you next time on Gaming Scan.